Hi, Holly. Hi, Kate. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a book, Man into Woman, the first sex change, a portrait of Lily Alb. That's Mine nice. doesn't have a nice cover. Oh, have you got an ugly one? Oh. <laughs> I just, an ugly li this is like I put this nice and close up so everyone gets a sense of the the beauty of this guy. It's very important with the face. Yes. Yep. Um, so the the book is uh, what ostensibly his memoir, but it's not straightforward. A memoir. It's a um, it's what it's a compilation of what well, says. Um, in the beginning of the book, it's a compilation um, of what, of l dictations by Lily. Yeah. Of letters Lily wrote. Sorry, so Lily is the name that. The, uh, I'm, doing <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job of this. <laughs> um, so Ina Wegner is the the man. Uh, he, he's an artist, and he's so and he, he undergoes a some operations or sex change and be becomes Lily. Yeah. Although he's Lily before the sex change too. <laughs> um, so it's some of his dictations to a friend. It's some letters that he wrote to his wife and maybe some friends. Yeah. Um, some, it's, sometimes letters they wrote back, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and also, it's it's what it's got a bit in it by by Niels Hoyer. It says compiled by Niels Hoyer, partly from his own knowledge. Yeah, and it sort of has the flavour of a fiction when you read it, right? So it, I guess that maybe that guy Hoyer transforms all the material into a kind of palatable, readable story. So it's got a yeah. very weird flavour as a book, right? Yeah. Yes. And then the and, in intro says it's been confirmed by a surgeon, one of the surgeons involved. Yeah, I didn't know quite what to make of that. What, what, what's been confirmed? I take it it was the medical detail, like the, that, the, that it's supposed to be accurate what surgeries or medical stays happened at roughly what times and where, right. um, so that the details of that stuff is accurate. Although I think we'll talk more later about the extent of the accuracy, yeah. Yeah, I just found that an interesting line, right? Like, this has been declared to be true by a surgeon. <laughs> yeah. Has a lot of authority, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's worth mentioning too that this book is the story that the movie The Danish Girl is based mm -hmm. on. So probably people will be more familiar with the rough idea of the character from the movie The Danish Girl, but this is to some extent, at least in his own words or in the words of the people around him or in these lengthy monologues that he has his friends transcribe. So you get way more of an insight, right, into his, like, mental states and how the thing unfolds. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think you get a little bit of a different depiction or a different story yep. than the one that you get in the movie. I actually need to rewatch the movie because it's been such a long time that I don't really remember how similar they are. Yeah, so do I. I just, uh, I have this memory of um, of the scene in the movie when he perhaps first dresses up as Lily, you know, for, for a portrait, uh, and he's like touching the clothes and you, you can, I guess, sort of see it in his eyes, this feeling of like, uh, um, this, I don't know what, like a realisation. Yeah. And that, I don't, that's not how the story's told in the book. No, that's right. It's it's downplayed that first moment, right? Like he definitely likes himself and is surprised by how pretty he looks. Yeah. But it's much more like that goes on for two years of just casual dressing up and increasingly like having this alter yeah. ego. And so. sometimes forgetting and still referring to Einar as his self. Yeah. It's not, it's not a moment of self-discovery, I think, in the way that it's portrayed in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, I can see why they would do that. It's an easier narrative, right? Like, and it then is. I saw myself for the first time and I knew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Which is the interesting thing about this, right? I, in some ways, it seems like an attempt to, to tell that story about himself. Yeah. But it, but it also exceeds it. You mean it's un... It's it, an, it doesn't conform, I think. The book doesn't conform to the current narratives around trans not entirely agreed yeah, agreed. yeah. 
May, is it maybe just before we get into the uh, details, we should say the reason we thought it's important to discuss this book, right, is that it's the first sex change surgery. Yeah. Um, and so it seems like going back to the reasoning of that guy, like how this unfolded and why he wanted it and what he went through might be interesting and revealing. And indeed, I think we both found that it was, right? Um, yeah. What, what were your impressions of the book when you read it? Um, I found it, I, I found it illuminating yep. on a meta level, I think. Uh, and I found it infuriating. Yep. I was really absorbed in it early on. And I think I found it increasingly, in, increasingly infuriating and, and wanted to put it down. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It was very readable, right? Like I, I sort it, of like appreciated the form in the sense that like, it was just like reading a fiction book rather than a kind of hard work yeah whatever you call them documentary books <laughs> they've obviously got yeah. a name um but but it's, it's so mal it's melodramatic yes you know i yeah and he's he's indifference to his to his or perhaps not indifference obliviousness to his wife bothered me yep oh yeah and as the book goes on there's just sexism there's homophobia there's yeah. narcissism this, yeah. yeah the self-absorption is on a whole nother level yeah and then there's just a feeling of unreliability, right? Like certain things just don't add up. Yeah. Um, and so it's a bit hard to, you don't get a lot of like honest self-reflection. It almost feels like you get a lot of having this certain sort of story that you want to justify. And so you tell, I mean, it's, that's not going to make sense to people that haven't read it. But one example is like, there's the, I think an early on, once he starts cross-dressing, right? He goes to this ball and he yeah. claims that he's the most gorgeous woman in the yeah. room, that other women are shooting icy glances at him, that yeah. Gret, Gret, his wife, has to explain how women hate other women. Uh, men pursue him. Men pursue him. He's like accosted, I think, twice, he claims yeah. afterwards, but some trying to make out with him. Um, but then there's a photo of him. The book also has these photos of him in his various woman presentations. and. And he just isn't extraordinarily beautiful in the way that he describes. Yeah. And I don't think that's just a thing about that time. It's not like, well, he doesn't I, look beautiful for the 90s. I, I did wonder that. I don't, I mean, maybe, but it didn't, I think we've seen enough pictures from that kind of era. What was that, 1930s yeah. or something? Yeah, like, yeah. what do you mean, 1920s? No, yeah, you're right. Like, it's just not credible. We, we know what. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting to try to reconcile, like, he's making this claim and you're supposed to believe it, but, but there's also evidence right there that the claim isn't true. And so you wonder yeah. what, what was really going on. Um, yeah. And so along with that, the, the false claims, there's also the event. I found it so evasive. You know, there are no, there, are there any details about the operations? Well, <laughs> that's the other thing, right? So... Um, there's this very interesting set of, like, there's a sense in which there's some information, right? Like we know that I think the first one gets, oh, I'm going to mix them up. I think the first one gets rid of the testicles and the second one gets rid of the penis or maybe both at once. I can't remember, but there's a precondition. He can't go into the women's clinic while he yeah. has a penis. It's almost, yeah. which is interesting itself, right? Like you're but a he woman. never uses the word penis. No, no. But these surgeries give him admission to an exclusively woman place. And I think that it's somehow yeah. conveyed that that's that. And then there's supposed to be at some point, one of the operations confirms what's going on with the innards. Yeah, that's right. Right. Um, and then I guess there's an operation to get a, a neo vagina vulva. Yeah. And then the last operation is to get a, a womb transplant. And then that fails. Um, he dies yeah. i think yeah but the the thing that's interesting is that this kind of gets to a really like perhaps one of the most frustrating bits of the book right that it seems to conflate intersex conditions with being trans and i was really surprised by this because i thought this is always the narrative of the first trans sexual right and we all know uh, that's yes. separate from intersex yeah. <laughs> um but it comes up early on, right, that like 
the one of the is it in Berlin? One of the doctors there kind of guesses yeah. that he's got female reproductive anatomy on the inside, yeah. and so he's a kind of in the terms of the time hermaphrodite or pseudo hermaphrodite, and then there's this kind of like that would explain everything, but we'll need to like confirm that later on. Um, and then he that is confirmed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I did wonder about that. Yeah, whether that can be true. What... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I got really interested in that too. Um, uh, and then I talked to this biologist about it because I wanted to find out, is there an intersex condition such that? Because it's, did you note the page actually? There's a bit where it confirms he was fully functional as a male, right? He was. Uh, yeah, early on, yes. Uh, in, investigation showed that although his external genital organ, organs were normal and he was married and able to perform a sexual act as a male, his body contained ovaries. Is that the line you're thinking yes, of? Yes, exactly. So yeah. it's like we know he's now, it's not that there's any kind of ambiguous genitalia or yeah. obvious intersex condition, it's that he's for all intents and purposes outwardly and functionally uh, when it comes to sex, male. Yeah. But there's just this claim about internal female reproductive anatomy. And as far as I learned from this biologist, uh, sorry, that then one further claim is that he has, he claims that the doctor said he would have ovaries. Yeah. And then he claims that that was confirmed in later surgery. And yeah. even the narrator, um, the introduction to the book says that the surgeons confirmed the confirmed. medical detail. Yeah. Right. But that is impossible. So according to this biologist, right. there is no such biological possibility and no intersex condition where you could have fully functional male anatomy yeah. and ovaries. Right. <laughs> you wow. just couldn't. Like the gonads go one way or the other. And if they've gone yeah. the way that gives you functional male anatomy, then you could not have ovaries. She said the most likely kind of closest thing that he would have had would have been an intersex condition called uh, PMDS, which I think is post malarian duct syndrome. And that would mean he would have some um, shriveled or early developmental female reproductive stuff, but that would just be an early kind of version of a uterus and right. like proto or whatever fallopian tubes. Definitely yeah. no ovaries, eggs, whatever else. Right. And in a male that has that kind of condition, that stuff would normally be cut out if it proved, like if it started to cause medical problems for the person. Oh, I see. Um, so why did your friend say that's the most likely explanation? I think she, I think she said she has seen in the discussion of that intersex condition, misreports by doctors of there being ovarian tissue. Right. But that that's impossible. And so she thinks because the tissue would be like shriveled or whatever the right word is like for embryonic, like early stage development, yeah. it might just be that it's kind of hard to distinguish exactly what the tissue is. Okay, it's, right. So there was something there and they did see it. Exactly. They just misdiagnosed it. Exactly. So okay. best explanation is probably there was something, but it was misreported as ovaries. Right. And then of course, all this cultural significance is built on the fact that it was ovaries and then the he and perhaps other trans women who also have this intersex condition, rare as it is, may think that means they were really meant to be female or were really yeah. female. Yeah, um, right. But that's like very telling because it, I think in the book, right, I, I don't know if you got the same impression, it was like a lot of weight was put on that as though the discovery of these ovaries showed somehow yeah. and almost was meant to explain epistemically, right, that yeah. he comes it's vindicating. Up, yeah. Yeah. And certainly I think that's how he felt, right? I know when it was confirmed, he felt validated. Or yeah. he felt that it made sense of everything. Yeah, exactly. But that would mean there was a causal... This is kind of like saying you could have some sort of... Uh, Cancer is probably a bad example, but I'm just thinking like we're notoriously not good at knowing or intuiting weird stuff that's going on inside our, our bodies, right? Yeah. And loads of people with intersex conditions for, in either sex don't know until like 40 years later you know a woman is trying to get pregnant yeah and she can't or, and then she checks her fertility and she finds out yeah it's discovered incidentally yeah yeah so it's like how come 
for most people you would just have no sense of that or no sense of other medical things going wrong you know unless they cause pain or start like really making a problem but somehow yeah. this guy knew yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah yeah he's yeah he's yeah he's he's ovaries or he's shriveled or proto ovaries like pushed lily out or pushed it to the surface exactly yeah made it inevitable yeah so it's a weird it's like there's two weird things it's like one is weird that we want to not mix up trans with intersex but the book does it's almost got such a validating role on the having of the genetic vestigial material or whatever that it suggests mere gender identity alone hasn't got much to do with this story so that's yeah. like well, that's quite inconvenient yeah. for current trans activists and then this weird claim that like somehow that's what would make you know like almost buying into a psychology of gender right that like he starts he's feminine and he starts acting feminine or he really takes to dressing up as a woman precisely yeah. because he's got this shriveled um, yeah. uterus or whatever <laughs> yeah i guess so a couple of things one why would why would the shrivel shriveled ovaries be be, be dominant like if he's also got the male genitalia right. how do you get how do you get to say which is like which is the the authentic genitalia yes right exactly and what you can imagine any, especially if one is dormant or you know underdeveloped absolutely with, and now like i looked up the recommended treatment for P pmds and, it, and it's to take that tissue out yeah. so the person is fully male functioning as male looking male yeah and then they just have some leftover little bits and pieces inside you would remove yeah. them so there's absolutely yeah. no argument there that the person is really female or should somehow then undergo a big social transformation to become their true self there's, yeah. there's no such argument yeah <laughs> the, so the other thing though is is that then the narrative does disrupt or run against that a little bit right like he does you know he, he doesn't so I, it would be easy i think to, to tell a story about your childhood like Oh, well, when I was little, I loved playing with dolls and I had a feminine voice and everyone mistook me for a girl. And he does say those things, but he also says, oh, for the rest, I was an ordinary boy. You know, yep. I played soldiers with my brothers. Uh, That's true. There's both, isn't there? And, the, and the, yeah. the girl stuff is kind of downplayed. It's like, oh, one time these little girls put a hat on me and said I looked like a girl and all my playmates were girls. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then it was like he was the only boy at a girls' school, so of course they were, right? Or That's at a right. school with mostly girls. Like, And he does note that lots of boys did things like push the pram, you know, their sister's pram around and play with Barbies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that you know, to me, it sounded like, um, you know, when people, I think we've talked about this before, but I can't remember if online or off, um, that, that people come up with narratives that suit their current purposes, right? So, yeah. of course, it's like, well, I'm a woman now, so let me cast my mind back. Oh, yeah, yeah. I pushed the pram that time, and one time yeah. someone put a hat on me, but... Oh, it all stacks up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like... my woman self was always trying to emerge. Exactly. And he does actually say, doesn't he, something about his childhood being his first dissimulation? Does he? He does, that. yeah. Yeah. Um, but I guess, yeah, I think that's what I want to say, though, that he's not always, perhaps inadvertently, he's not always doing that. Or he's attempting to tell that story, right, that, that can kind of convenient story. But he does also maybe accidentally tell a different story. Yeah. You know, like he doesn't for, I think it's not for quite a long time that he talks about Lily as his true self. Yeah. For a little while, he talks about Lily as, as just his character that he dresses up as and, you know, and performs as. Yep. And then... As that goes on, he talk, you know, and he forgets, he forgets about her, and his wife, Greet, has to, you know, is the one who keeps, is, who, who asks, yeah, can you dress up as Lily? Can Lily come back today? So then, after a while of that, he talks about two cells, I think. Yeah, you know, so Lily Hello, is growing everything. and getting a personality, and so he talks about her and on uh, Andreas. Yeah, uh, and then finally, he talks about Lily becoming the dominant self and yeah. trying to um, trying to suffocate. Or uh, murder? Does he even use that language? I think so. I think, or at least it's like Andreas needs to sacrifice for Lily, but that's okay because he was chivalrous anyway. But there is really this sense of like multiple personality disorder. Yes. Like there's yeah. these two people living in the same carcass and they're going to have to, one's going to have to win, but, but don't worry because this is the real one anyway. Yeah. And this one will die for her. <laughs> hey, maybe this is just semantic, but there was a line about there are two souls in one body. One is a man and the other a girl. Oh, 
I think the girl, right? I catch that. Yeah. Not, not a man, the woman, a girl. And yeah. And like, Lily is such a, you know, a, a girl. Yeah. She's like dim witted. <laughs> no, that's Always right. Always happy. Yeah, that's right. Actually, we should let's go into talking about that because there was that was one of the other most enraging facts about the book, right? That there was yeah. just this revealed view of women. And okay, it's like the 1920s, 30s. So that was quite a sexist time. So we can probably talk separately, I guess, about how blameworthy he is for buying into that. But yeah. it is particularly enraging when it's like, that's a presented view of what women are like, and the basis on which you believe you are one, because it seems to me to really undermine the credibility of the claim. That's not a true trans narrative that you happen to buy into these ludicrous stereotypes at a time. So yeah. I'll just yeah. read for the anyone watching that um, the what I thought was the worst of it, <laughs> even though there's examples. <laughs> there's quite a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a lot of it. Um, so in, in this bit of the book, he's talk he's meeting with his, Andreas's sister, and so he's talking about the difference between Andreas as a character and Lily. Um, so he says about the sister i did not make it easy for her for when it for whenever i showed myself by my character and the way in which i spoke in which i moved in which i thought i veiled completely the character of andreas he was ingenious sagacious and interested in everything a reflective and thoughtful man and i lily was quite superficial deliberately so for i had to demonstrate every day that i was a different creature from him that i was a woman now brace yourself, a thoughtless, flighty, very superficially minded woman, fond of dress and fond of enjoyment. Yes, I believe, even child childish. And I can say it calmly now, all this was certainly not mere farcical acting. It was my real character, untroubled, carefree, illogical, capricious female. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what? I know, I know. I was... Because some of the other male characters appear almost as sexist. Yeah. So I did. I I I I was asking myself like, are you, are you as cross with them as you are with him, or does it bother you as much when they do it as when he does it? And Good. if not, why? I mean, instinctively, I think if we were just reading a novel that had all these like douchebags in it making stupid claims about women it would be irritating right but you could just historicize it but it's the idea that we're being asked to swallow today this claim that there is a natural biological whatever phenomenon of some people of one sex just vehemently knowing <laughs> or yeah. uh, so fervently believing that they ought to have been or really are the other sex and that society needs to go to these huge lengths to accommodate that, you know, to the point of like, really probably should have much more sophisticated surgeries available and do that early on. And right, so yeah. we're really being asked to believe in this thing. But then it's so transparent in the book that the thing is not attached to real femaleness whatever that would be it's just utterly transparent that it's latching on to man's concept of woman at the time yeah. and that yeah. cannot be a biological phenomenon yeah. you cannot be genetically yeah. predisposed like with sexual orientation let's say to being attracted to a stupid stereotype of a woman at a time in a yeah. cultural context yeah right so i think for me it's more that it's like hilariously undermining yeah <laughs> so it's not and, i guess and, na and naturalizing of what feminists have done so much work to show as a stereotype absolutely yes because if we believe we're being given a choice right believe him believe trans right or believe feminists that that's not what they really are and the yeah. more that we're being asked to believe him the more yeah. we're supposed to reify that women really are flighty submissive childish. heads full of nonsense childish yeah. whatever yeah. um yeah. Actually, that might be a good segue. Did you, had you marched that bit about the the sort of, there was a bit that had like a feminist complaint, right? Someone tries to have a chat with him about what kind of woman he's being. Yes. <laughs> um, so he, I, he, he's in the clinic, clinic, right? And he, so I think he's just had an operation. Yep. And then we, so he, oh, he must be in the women's clinic, right? 
Yes, I think so. Yep. Um, Maybe it's, and it's another the, so this woman says, I'm just trying to work out where to... Okay, I'll, I'll just start. I'll start here. So he's writing this letter to his wife, Breed. Yep. Um, he says, then I must tell you about a conversation I had yesterday with the friend of Teddy Bear. She was a pretty elegant and interesting woman, only somewhat learned. She is a doctor here in Dresden. No doubt Mrs. Teddy Bear had taught her something about myself. We chatted in a very animated fashion about unimportant things. I laughed a good deal. I affected a superficial and careless demeanour. That was all very well in its way, but I had provoked the doctor's dis displeasure. Suddenly she said, you are 100% woman. That sounded very sympathetic. How do you make that out? I inquired with a smile. You are very coquettish and your head is full of nonsense. I believe you would like the lords of creation to tyrannise over you, which in fact she says, or the, sorry, Lily or Andreas says about himself. The lords of creation being men. You would like yes. men to tyrannise over you. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, but perhaps you achieve more by your methods than we modern women. What we have to fight for you, what we have to fight for you achieve, you achieve in a twinkling by means of a few tears. You seem to me like a female type of a vanished age. Oh. great analysis by her really really good and doesn't yeah. even go on to just like think it's hilarious and dismiss it is that right i laughed till i cried <laughs> what? that's what he says yeah i find that so i mean yeah it's what a great i mean how wonderful that he wasn't self-aware enough to leave that out or the friend who wrote it all up because that's well, well, my, reading this i thought he felt validated by it Yes, I think that's what comes across, right? Like, oh, you yeah, one hundred percent woman, head full of nonsense. Oh, I am a woman. Oh, but he's not at all taken seriously because that's an old-fashioned version of the current, or at least the, the radical feminist complaint about transsexualism, right? People like Janice Raymond, this idea that it's a performance of the worst kind of stereotypes that feminists are trying to get rid yeah. of and therefore it's antithetical to feminism yeah she's delivering a version of that criticism yes and he finds it hilarious uh, like he's not yeah. even remotely able to to think oh interesting i mean maybe maybe that's because the modern woman is just taken so unseriously then that he can't even see it's a legitimate movement yeah interesting i was just thinking like, i mean think, like like look at his ideas of of woman right like how could he really conceive of what this woman is saying as anything other than than affirmation yeah yeah like yeah could could someone who has these ideas about women really entertain women being something uh, being, being the sorts of creatures that feminism thinks they are but then who is this doctor right like she there is obviously a cohort of these modern women that want to be more accomplished or independent yeah. I grant that it's too early for it to have taken off, right? These might be like, they might want the vote, <laughs> but they yeah. haven't fully articulated and formed feminist movement. Yeah. But they're at least a different kind of woman. Like she's at least distinguishing from the ones who change their own tire and the ones who cry so that a man will do it, right? Yeah. And she's saying, you're that kind and I'm this kind. So yeah. there's enough there that he... So you think he should be able to see her as a kind of woman? Gosh, is it too much to ask? Maybe it and is. And be compelled to reflect. Yeah. I, Maybe it is. Oh, I mean, I guess he does. He does. And, you know, he emphasizes her prettiness, her elegance. But that's him dragging her back out of accomplishment and into uh, yes. his... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, that's right. In order to deal with this woman as a kind of woman, I will emphasize her feminine qualities. Yeah. And he's not, he's a bit baffled about the rest. Yeah, maybe it is too much. Maybe it's too much to ask. Um, of 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 him. Yeah, of him. You know, maybe if that's your your desperate project. Because uh, I think this runs that's both right. ways. Maybe this takes us a bit too far away from the book, but but I I have sort of, you know, this primary state of emergency idea that I think we we've talked about before. Like if the trans primary state of emergency yeah. is just kind of becoming this thing that you want to be maybe you have a very good excuse for the complete ignorance or well I, I think it's not just excuse right you can't you can't reconcile it with your project 
So I, so you can't ever see it. It's, it's not just... only, I was tempted to say, so you have to deny it, but I think probably in the first place you can't even see it. Yeah. God, is that true? I've... Um, well, if he, well, okay, if he, if he, yeah, I don't, like, could he maintain his belief in himself as a woman? If he acknowledged that this woman is another kind of woman, um, or that his conception of a woman might be a stereotype, I don't think he could. I think he would be forced to, to doubt himself. Yeah, you're, it's very interesting, right? Because the question is, what is he pinning his identity to as a woman? And it's an easy thing to pin it to, to look like one. Like a woman is a beautiful yeah. object. Now I just have to be a beautiful enough object and I'm done. Yeah. If he accepts the modern woman as a woman, he loses a lot of um, concreteness to what he can pin it on. Yeah, that's right. And maybe there's still something like, well, you can be sort of reasonably attractive and feminine looking, but you have to be more independent and less under the will of a man. Oh, maybe that's a thing I can still understand. But, you know, the more you end up retreating to the modern gender critical point right of just like it's just a female who's whatever the fuck she likes then there's nothing a man can pin himself to to be that right it's like it's very minimal content and he isn't it he's just excluded in advance yeah Um, so you're probably right in the end that it would be hard to come up with something that is a middle ground like where he could have really understood her and aspired to be more like her but still as a woman um, I mean, it is interesting. He, he does even say, you know, his, his equation of Lily with with a young, beautiful woman. He, what does he? He so he says, um, page ninety two. Mm. Really, I cannot imagine what existence would be like if Lily should one day vanish forever, or if she should no longer look young and beautiful. Then she would no longer have any justification for living at all. I yeah. thought that was quite interesting. So it's not so it's not just that he thinks he's a woman or wants to be a woman, right? Like if Lily weren't he he wants to be beautiful. Yeah. I mean it's very interesting because it's like it's actually really sad. And when women believe that yeah. we feel empathy, right? Like we think, God, you know, even as these women on Instagram and it's like they've put all their eggs into the basket of being beautiful and that can't last or it's what we used to say about actresses right like that's not that cannot last your whole lifetime and so that's a really stupid thing to bet on yeah um is it i I guess a difference a difference is that he's well earlier on he's really convinced of his beauty and i found that um i mean that's women are so self-doubting yeah there's another bit actually that ties in really well with this much later on on 223 uh, he's he's had the surgeries and I think he might still be in the clinic, but he says he was afraid to go out for a walk. And then he says, the tiniest smudge on the face intimidated me at that time so much that I would only sally forth oh, with him, the son that he's taking for a walk, yeah. um, with him heavily veiled. I felt like a pariah. Other women could be ugly could commit every possible crime. Yeah. I, however, must be beautiful, must be immaculate, else I lost every right to be a woman. Yeah. And so, I mean, again, it's like if, if a woman thought that because she'd been conditioned to think that her value was only in her appearance, we would just feel really sorry for her and try to want to get her to understand that's not her. Yeah. But there's something especially, it's harder to be empathetic when that's a man bringing his horrible view of women, even though a lot of people have it, yeah, to believing that he is one and then desperately trying to succeed on those terms. Uh, at, at, at any cost to women. Yeah, but is that fair or is that just like blaming the one person for a big social mess? Well, actually, um, I did early on, I did... Uh, perhaps the empathy is too strong, but I did really feel that the people around him, you know, the, the, these doctors are... Ha- what? trying to play god or cowboys or yeah uh, you, you can see they're like rubbing their hands with glee aren't they like oh what an opportunity yeah they can experiment it's a sort of yeah. guinea pig situation and he sees them as prophets mm. um you know it's having these almost magical powers yeah which to some extent they 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 still play that role right like they treated him as a guinea pig they didn't know they could do 
ovary transplants and it turned out they couldn't right so they tried and then he died yeah. and i don't know if they tried again but that's that has never become a thing yeah right and so there are these poor trans people <laughs> getting yeah. these surgeries that were initially experimental but are now making a lot of money and billed as being life-saving yeah i mean they really exploit him right even saying in that first instance oh i'm i'm almost certain you've got ovaries there's just no i mean what he was just seeing a confused man who liked to wear dresses at that point right yeah and what a thing to say that's yeah. really exploitative i wonder also how differently things could have gone like i think about this a lot with trans yeah. people in general and especially people who are think they're trans when they're kids like yeah. what happens if the doctor or the family member or whatever just says like it's fine to want to dress up it's fine yeah. to enjoy the feeling of beautiful fabrics instead of these rough coarse wool suits yes. or whatever it's that's all fine it's normal like yeah. enjoy yourself rather than stigmatizing it and then making the person think that yeah. there's some elaborate explanation like they really must be sick and need to be transformed yeah. in this way yeah um, yeah i know and i uh, i guess i feel like this is it um i, I I feel like this gives us a good sense of other people's role as, as, as authors of this narrative. Yeah. Um, so there's the doctors. Also, the um, early, well, the way he tells the story, his wife is very, respon very responsible for the emergence of Lily. I was just going to say, because you'd said early on that you, you sort of felt, or maybe you didn't say you felt sorry for her, but you said that he was really oblivious to her situation. But... But this adds complexity, right? You're, you're yeah. totally right that she was also very much facilitating, encouraging, and enabling. Yeah. Um, yeah, she, so it's not just that she creates you know, Lily. So like she says, oh, I need a model. What is it that she can't get a female model? So she says, you, oh, no, someone else puts it to her. Her I female model can't so. come. Exactly. The person she was doing the portrait of or the normal model can't make yeah. it and points out that Ina had nice legs, I think. Legs. Yeah, which had been said before. Yeah, and so the idea is to get him all dolled up so that he can sit for the portrait in her place. Yeah. Um, and then the way he tells it, you know, she paints really well and Lily becomes her favourite model. Yeah. And and also it's more, more than a model, right? She says that He says that Greet needs Lily. I mean, it's hard to know, right? Like I did at times, I, I felt this is a very easy story for you to be telling. Yeah. That your wife needs this woman who is displacing her husband yeah well it almost um. takes the blame off him right so the question is in the real world outside of this kind of fantasy version of the story was it actually him being kind of narcissistic really enjoying this wanting it more yeah. pushing it on greet or did greet actually want a kind of girlfriend gal, yeah. gal pal right and then yeah. find it really fun and like him more in that character yeah. it's really hard to know like who was pushing who or maybe a bit of both yeah. But even so, it seems like even if she wasn't doing, say, the facilitating or as much as he says, she still didn't say, yeah. still didn't say, I think you're con confused. Yeah. And even um, if it was, f I mean, I can see how people might not mind the cross-dressing at all, right? Like, who cares? Yeah. Just get dressed up, have fun, put makeup on the guy. Yeah. Like, who cares? Probably yeah. lots of people do that in there homes yeah. or for parties or whatever but she could have said at a certain point like you're actually taking this too far like there's no two yeah. souls trapped in one body yeah there's no male and female cohabitation yeah. we invented lily yeah and we can uninvent her or we can keep yeah. her in her place um, yeah yeah and that's the other thing right you do i think you get a, a nice picture of the invention of lily yep you know, he the the more time he spends her, as her, the more she develops a personality. You know, he, he talks about her acquiring her own friends. Yes, yeah. Which is like a very I can see that for some people that would be a very appealing story, right? Because uh, so often the real reinvention of the person, right? It's out of reach for most people. It's hard to just run away to a new country and yeah. start again. So this idea that you could be in disguise and start afresh, have a clean slate and developing a nice yeah. character. And practices them for a little while. <laughs> exactly. Like I can yeah. see how that's appealing and might be appealing to a lot of people. Um, but there's, But it's like outside of the trans narrative, we tend to think of it as highly deceptive, right? Like yeah. you're just pretending you're not this person that's done these things. 
and you're sort of lying to everyone you meet, right? Okay, so you ran away to yeah. Mexico and tried to start again, but it's not true that you're this new person, right? You've still yeah. got your whole history. So yeah. it's like the one unique domain where the starting a fresh narrative mm. is accepted. Um, yeah. Which, uh, yeah. That's right, because the person is fabricated and, and her past is fabricated. Absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they like forge a letter for her. Quite extreme. Yeah. But what do you think, because I, I think the last thing I, I wanted to touch on was the, the way that this accident, right, like they just basically create this character and then it goes yes. really far and then there's a surgery, just seems to have created this template that future trans sexual and transgender stuff has kind of been put on but it's like wow what a flimsy beginning it's not even yes. that he was a he knew since he was five right he He's was just, absolutely contingent yeah and that yeah. is very interesting right if well if, if if the model if Brit's model had a thing able to come yeah nothing would have ever and changed her. Yeah. yeah and even yeah. The, the, conf the confusion with the intersex thing too ties in here um because because of course now we're supposed to think that that's separate you don't need any any like bodily reason to think that you're the opposite sex so i don't know for me it feels like if this was the beginning um it just looks more like a made up nonsense <laughs> that's probably too harsh but yeah, the or, whole or thing what? more more like someone who is who who is what um uncertain about who they are or who dislikes who they are I want because yeah. I wondered that too at times like that he just he seemed to really love the attention that or the intention that the attention that he thought Lily got anyway yeah, yeah. you know everyone looking at him and thinking he was pretty yeah and pursuing him um so yeah is it just that we had that person and and he liked that and and a story that made sense of that yeah a ready at store ready to hand yeah given to him by the doctors was that he was really a woman or not only a woman internally female yeah but then what do you think the status of that would be like because obviously we we want the world to be full of options that people enjoy and make them happy yeah. right and if it was just hey look some people are just going to be more attractive were they the opposite sex and had a different hairstyle right with that face uh, and some people will just love the frippery. I can think of a particular person who's a trans woman who has really commented quite a lot on the the fabrics, right? Like the, the feel of the woman's clothes and, you know, yeah. but if you're just a person who finds all that fun and appealing in some way and it makes more sense to be able to do that given the norms of our societies and the disapproval, is it, it like yeah sorry i'm i'm it's a yeah. informed thought but it, i'm just wondering do we end all up the, with the, all the the incoherence of doing those things the incoherence in our society our vocabulary of doing those things yeah and and still calling oneself a man exactly like it would yeah. just be especially in the 20s or whatever yeah really hard to just be an out cross-dresser yes yeah um, yeah so, so, so a search for some coherence yeah which is, again, it's like, it's not a, I guess I'm not really interested in blaming, but I am interested in thinking, is this undercutting of the current phenomenon yeah. of the claim that some people are just trans and there's nothing they can do about that? I think, I think it is. And also a bit of a cautionary tale, you know, because what if it, if it's just, if it's, if this happened due to a contingency and, or it was just, it was an explanation that suited everyone around him. Yeah. You know, then, then what? Then who is this all for? Also, but what does it mean for the next guy, right? So of course, the next people after that would have just because this got in the papers, yeah, right. And then, and then, what is the idea that some other men then just thought, oh, yeah, I would enjoy cross dressing or being pretty or getting attention or what? So is it like it opens up a possibility that we previously didn't have, and some people like or that. Or it cements a story. It cements a story, but that story is appealing to men in various ways, right? I'm just trying to think, how does it get going from there? And then why are we giving it so much? Does mm. it deserve the kind of seriousness that it gets? Because it's, okay, maybe it is contingent and it just suits some men well, 
Well, nonetheless, they do get discriminated against once they start doing it if they don't pass perfectly, right? Because yeah. then they're, and okay, so that, well, that is what trans is. Do they deserve women's rights? Well, here we are, we have that conversation, but it's like, this is just yeah. about how undercutting it is, right? Because maybe it isn't that undercutting. It was a possibility. Yeah, it's not biological, it's not innate, but it's a possibility some people like, and once yeah. they take it up, they get discriminated, so they need some rights. So here we are at the modern conflict, whether it's a true... I, I think it's undercutting insofar as a story is often told as one of inevitability. Yes. Right? Um, and I think and I think it's only in virtue of the inevitability that we would really concede, like, here we are. Okay, yeah. let's talk about how we're going to manage conflicts of rights here. Yeah. Or, yeah, or why we would, I guess, continue going down this path. Yeah. If we thought it weren't inevitable, mightn't we, mightn't we really pause? Agreed, and we're now progressive, right? So we're now not in the 1920s, and it's okay yeah. for men to cross-dress, and you yes. don't need to have radical surgeries yes. that cause... Because so, there was so much pain in this book, yeah. right? Like, he's recovering from... Why for... are we shoring up stereotypes in this way? Yeah. Instead of, oh, here's a man who's making us question our ideas of what it is to be a man. Like, oh, here's a man who's really a woman. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, that's helpful. That the, the sort of solution makes way more sense the more intolerant the society is. But in a yes. society like ours, even though we've got that narrative going now, we have much yeah. more low pain, low cost solutions yeah. to that kind or, of choice. Or perhaps it shows how, how much we haven't progressed. That, or how much progressives haven't progressed. You mean that the fact that these young trans people feel like that's their best option reveals yeah. the and same. then everyone around them reaches immediately for this story. Right. Rather than just, you can wear dresses, Dave. Like, yeah. you're allowed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gosh. I, yeah, I do. I, 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 I felt like reading this, this was quite a condemnation of the people around him who, who sold him his story and fed his, fed his delusion. Yeah. And were in some way partly responsible for his death. Yeah. No, it's true. Um, I mean, so much, not only the death would have been avoided, but just literally so much pain, right? Yeah. Like these hugely invasive surgeries and the recovery. I just read this. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you saw this piece that everyone's talking about in the New Yorker, is it? Um, I think it, it, it was a lot of people were discussing yesterday. It was a very graphic story by a trans masculine or trans man person about their penis surgery. Right. But it was just horrific. Like the, the yeah. detail of how it's performed and then how painful and incredibly long the, the recovery took and the, the, you know, just that, that really were these, the book and that, you know, it's like, gosh, these people are really going through yeah. horrific. I think it's impressive that a person can even tell that story to themselves. You know, if mind confronting that make you wonder. Yeah, well, the narrative in the, I think it was the New Yorker, somehow has those words, but you know, there's like three things with a similar name and yeah. I always mix them up. Um, but yeah, I think in, in that it was really presented as like true trans uh, would go to any length to achieve authenticity. Uh, yeah. And now look at the lengths. Look at the money, $80,000 apparently for a phalloplasty, all yeah. this pain. Apparently in 50% of cases, something goes wrong, so you need follow-ups. And he was yeah. saying the most number of follow-ups he knows someone personally had was 12 or something. So it's like the, it was really curated as this is a real phenomenon. You're born this way, you can't help it. Same, yeah. same narrative as for sexual orientation, right? Yeah. And this is just what it takes to achieve authenticity it means to get the body that you should have had and i guess yeah. this book just made me think so much yeah it's just not true it's just like no. it's just not yeah. true yeah if it was true wouldn't the first sex change person have been a person who met the could it could it be possible that there really is true trans and yet the first person to ever convince medics and surgeons that he wanted it was just an accidental cross-dresser, but there yeah. are these true trans people out there that had not yet been manif like showing themselves. Is that possible? No, well, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, 
guess, well, what do we mean by, by true trans, right? Like, or once you accept that we are all just telling stories about ourselves. I guess what I mean is like something that would roughly parallel the born this way story for sexual orientation that yeah. the child yeah. is gender non-conforming and then yeah. very early as soon as puberty or whatever comes it knows who they're attracted to or who they yeah think yeah right like. no i see and so yeah. I, I, that's yeah. my true trans yeah. concept and of course people say that that exists right like oh since he was a little boy he kept saying he, he was a girl and he was yeah. so much happier and so they have that they have that story but of course that story is being endorsed and facilitated by everyone around that person and i've never heard a case where that person is told you are absolutely okay the way you are wear a dress yes. if you like never yeah. heard that and the yeah person's... And, and, and lots of other boys do this and exactly and yeah. so you would really want to know if you told them that would they still insist that this psychological yeah. if they would yeah. then i would believe i would be more of a believer that there at least is this psychological phenomenon and yeah. it's insistent yeah. and it cannot go away and then the yeah. only thing we can do to help those people is to make the surgeries fucking more effective less yeah. painful and accessible less mistakes that need to be followed up on yeah. and more accessible and a, and a good gatekeeping procedure to make sure you're only giving them to the people who actually meet that criterion yeah. but i'm so torn at the moment so this is just personal now i'm not about the book but i'm so torn between whether there is this person or the whole thing is just this kind of social, a bit sexist, a bit homophobic, made up diagnosis of ordinary human expression. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm still really trying to work yeah. it out. Yeah, I guess, but I, I mean, maybe even, the, isn't it possible that it's the second thing, but it does become the first thing? Like you, 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 once everyone around you tells you that's who you are, and once you start living as that person, and once you write your past, yeah, as that past, I, are you not then true trans? Yeah, maybe, maybe. And but, like, but... yeah, once you start looking back at all your childhood photos and you see only, you know, the feminine qualities. But it's con it's deeply contingent in the fact that society could stop believing in that stuff and yes, and sorry, go and so way. I want us to I want us to go that way or to do that experiment at least. Yeah. Um, I guess what what am I I guess what I'm trying to say is well, I think we could grant the second thing but take it as a product of the first. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that we don't have to say I know because it does seem yeah. So that I guess what so we don't have to say to people. Like, oh, you don't have that deep feeling. Yeah, I guess it's just like so much is at stake in this question because it's the difference between, uh, okay, some children who say they're trans really are and some are wrong because they're actually gay or they're actually traumatized or whatever. And mm -hmm. we just need to figure out who who's who. It's the difference between that and no child is trans. Right? Like, so it's fucking stop medicalizing them and stop telling people they can't be a way that just means having a personality and wearing clothes stop trying to yeah. repress people yeah and i think i'm um yeah it's just between those two things i think the the cost is so high of getting that wrong yes that i yeah. really like feel really invested in this question of like is it true and whether it's true f for me depends on whether we are just kind of all making it true by yeah. endorsing it and telling people that's what it is and giving yeah. them this story rather than this one to understand okay. themselves. But, but certainly, right, like once society really changes its ideas about what it is to be a woman, there could be no such thing, could there? Absolutely. He, he so it's, this it's, story it's, could it's, not have worked with a feminist understanding of woman. Yeah. So, you think so once society is feminist, Good. It will. It will. There will. There could be no true trans. Yeah, or at least radically minimized cohort, because anyone from either sex thinking they're the other sex, pinning it to the stupid content, stereotypical qualities, that would fall away, and they would. And the more that yeah. they could be as they want to be, like a theatre boy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the more they don't think they need to be a girl to do that. Um, so it would either end up in 
few trans or possibly none we just don't know i guess um yeah yeah, that's interesting sorry i know i'm yeah i get i'm really hung up on this no (laughs) i mean i think it's good to be hung up on it right like there is a lot at stake. There is a lot at there is a lot at stake here, yeah. um, and I think it's good that you recognise that. Uh, arguably, tra- some trans activists are not. Oh, well, you're recognising what's at stake if you, if you're wrong. Yes. I, I what I I think trans activists are not entertaining that. Yeah. No. You know, like we will be responsible for a lot of damage if we turn out to be wrong. Yes. Yeah. And there's not a discussion from their side about the damage they're doing to young gay kids, lesbians, yeah. women, feminism. Yeah. <laughs> um, if they're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we read the book because um, it was me like too. Baffling I... and interesting and. <laughs> and I think insightful. Yeah. In some strange way. Yeah. No, I think so too. Like lots to think about and talk about. Unfortunately, we cannot recommend to our. Uh, watches oh, that they yeah. buy the book because it is very very difficult to get hold of the book yeah it's <laughs> a bit surprising yeah like, i just mean given the movie and yeah yeah like i think i can't remember where i ordered it from but it was really hard to track down and it was really expensive and then you couldn't i had to get it through the yeah the yeah. library into my service yeah but uh we do have a magical um uh we have a magical pdf version acquired from our friend who can acquire anything in pdf form yeah, he's got great skills. <laughs> so if anyone's watching and then really curious to read the book feel free to shoot me an email and i can uh uh facilitate <laughs> i do think in this moment we should be reading it yeah yeah i think so too and yeah i was quite surprised that it's out of print but um yeah feel free feel free to get in touch if you are interested to read it okay i'll let you go because i think you have things to do yeah Okay, awesome.